show where we are always striving to find the most obscure answers. Let's meet today's players. And couple number one. Hello, I'm Susan. This is my daughter, Abby. Uh, I'm retired. Abby is a copy manager and we live in Gloucestershire. Couple number two. Hello, I'm Ian. This is my friend David and we live in North London and are both retired. Couple number three. Hello, my name's Jarrell. This is my good friend Jim. I'm a youth ambassador. Jim's a clerical officer and we are hail from Stoke-on-Trent. And finally, couple number four. Hi, I'm Sarah. This is my friend and colleague Rob and we're both doctors from Manchester. And these are today's contestants. Thank you very much indeed. A very warm welcome to Brighton Scoops and every one of you will get to chat a little bit more throughout the show as it goes along. So that just needs one more person for me to introduce. This dickie is trickier than a meeting of the magic circle on the same night as Robot Wars. It's my pointless friend, it's Richard. Hiya. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Zander. How are you? Oh, I'm very well, thank you. Excellent. Now, we've got two returning pairs from the last show, Susan and Abby, on Podium 1 there. I'm glad they're leading us off because they got through to the head-to-head -head last mm. time, so they had a good show. Did you? Uh, less good on Podium 4. <laughs> yes. Rob and Sarah. Yes. Both very clever, both doctors. Oh, they're clever. Uh, <laughs> and then Rob very much let Sarah down. <laughs> on a, on a, I'm going to call it a medical question, Rob, to be honest. <laughs> sort of was, <laughs> really. Uh, so Rob has some making up to do. They were actually very unlucky to get knocked out, so maybe we'll see a little bit more of them today. I do hope so. Question one's one of those ones where you go, well, that's impossible, and then actually you think, oh, that's, actually, I suppose it isn't impossible. But the first time you look at it, you think, oh, really? And it's fine. It's going to be good. Yeah. <sighs> Let's play it. Uh, now, Chris and Gemma didn't win the jackpot last time. That's exciting. So we have another £1,000 to that. So today's jackpot starts off at £2,000. There we are. Ready? Now just remember the pair with the highest score at the end of each round will be etc. There we are. That's that done. Uh, best of luck to all four pairs. Our first category today is air transport. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, let's find out what the question is. Here it comes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many countries with more airports than the UK as they could. Richard? Yeah, we're looking for the name of any country which has more airports or airfields than the UK. Please, according to the CIA World Factbook in September 2017, as always, by country, we mean a sovereign state, etc., etc. I, I like this new way that you're It's presenting. good, isn't it? Yeah, etc., etc., you know the rest. Yeah. Sovereign state, UN, yeah. own right. Yeah, etc. So just like more airports and airfields than the UK. Wow. Mm. Wowie. Susan, fun. No. No, fun. <laughs> when no. we unpack it, fun, maybe. Uh, Susan, you are retired. Remind us what you like getting up to, Susan. I sing in a choir, a community choir. There we go. Um, Tell me a bit more about the choir. How big is it? Um, ooh, there's about 40, just mm -hmm. over 40 people. And do you divide in sections? Yes. Do you sing different yes, parts? Yes, it's a cappello and we sing in four, four parts. Very good. And who is your director? Oh, Sheila. Sheila Macbeth, who is... Sheila. Oh, that's a name. Sheila, Sheila, Sheila Macbeth. Macbeth. Now you're talking about um, one parent Australian, one parent Scottish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can't really avoid saying her name in a theatre, can no. you? Uh, but she keeps you on your toes, actually. Well, she, she does a lot of the arranging and, oh, and really? even writing occasionally. She'd be a big, great name for a detective as well. Sheila Macbeth. Sheila Macbeth, <laughs> D.I. Yeah. Oh, what do you think? Uh, now, Susan. So we're looking for the name of any country with more airports than the UK. Oh, uh, this might be a bit of an obvious one, but I think I'm going to say Russia. Russia. OK, let's see if it's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Russia. It is right. 56. That may not be a bad score. We won't know. It's a little bit further on in the round. But Susan, Russia is a correct answer and a great start to the round. Uh, yeah, do you know in 2011, the Russian uh, Dmitry Medvedev brought out a law saying that beer could be classed as alcohol finally? Because anything, literally anything under 10% alcohol uh, in Russia was food stuff. <laughs> literally didn't count as alcohol. It wasn't booze. Wow. Yeah. Goodness gracious me. David, welcome to Pointless. Thank you. Very good to have you here, David. Uh, what keeps you busy? Well, um, uh, one word, opera. Ah. But 
quite simply. Um, and where do you, where do you go I, to When I go to the opera, um, no, uh, not only in the UK but abroad as well, I've seen currently uh, 986 different operas. Wow. Right. Look at that. Look at that. That's not, that, that's not um, that, but performance-wise, I've seen about 3,500, something like that. So. Wow. They're much classier than normal today, aren't they? Yeah. Isn't it? Is it? This, uh, yeah. If, no, uh, no pressure on you, Jim. <laughs> Jim. Jim now currently inventing a new hobby. Yeah. <laughs> so, David, what would you like to go for? Oh, well, I'm going to take a bit of a risk. I'm going to say South Africa. South Africa. Okay, let's see how many about 100 people went with South Africa. It's right. Very well played. Yeah, uh, yeah. Russia was fifth on the list of uh, most airports, and South Africa is eleventh uh, on the list. It scored at eleven points. Thank you very much, Richard. Now, Jim, welcome to Point. It's great to have you here from Stoke on Trent. Thank you. Uh, what keeps you busy, Jim? Uh, I'm, I'm a clerical officer here for the NHS. Very good indeed. So, what hours do you work? Are you in hours or out of hours? Yeah, usually evenings and, and nights. So okay. Maybe five till one or one till nine in the morning. It's a bit of a night owl. Okay. Well, uh, Gerald can give you a prod if you start yeah. if you start snoring. <laughs> okay, uh, Jim. What would you like to go for on our right list of countries <sighs> with, with more airports than the UK? Hmm. Hmm. I think we'll try Germany. Okay, Germany, says Jim. Germany stands for a reason. Let's see how many about 100 people said Germany. 56 is the high score. 11 is the low. You passed the high. 45 for Germany. There we are. Not bad. Well played, Jim. Safe and sound. Very good uh, punctuality statistics in German airports. You'd be surprised. Very yeah. surprised. Um, Rob, welcome back to Pointless. Great to have you with us. Oh, you were unlucky. It was a crick. We were looking for Francis Crick, and you said, "Oh, William." You were William Crick. Yeah. That's right. We got the crick bit. Yeah. Uh, Rob, uh, you uh, you are a doctor. Um, and what are your interests? Rob? Um, I like going to the theatre. Not been as many times as he's been to the opera. I like going to the Edinburgh Fringe in particular. I've been about five times in the last oh. fifteen years. Do you know what I love about the Edinburgh Fringe? Nothing lasts longer than an hour. <laughs> There's just something very nice about it. It's like it's just lots of canapes, a feast of canapes. Um, but what's the best thing you've seen up there? Um, oh, we, there was a really good performance this year of The Time Machine. It was a musical, which was quite good. And then we did, went to this thing called Masioki, where you go into this massive hall, and there's a live band, and you just sing karaoke with a live band. Just the band was there. Masioki's awesome. <laughs> Absolutely really? awesome. Uh, Rob, um, where are you going to go for? We've been, we haven't explored that much of the world yet. Um, I'm going to go for Canada. Canada, says Rob. Let's see how many about 100 people said Canada. Well, unsurprisingly, it's right. 56 is our high score, and you pass it. 42 for Canada. Look at that. Uh, Canada is fourth on this. It's got, got, got the fourth most airports and airfields. It's also got a dedicated UFO landing site. Oh, that is nice. That With is a nice. massive U. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> oh. they probably have the same alphabet. Yes, I should think so. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Pleasure. Lots to chew on there, there really. Is. Um, now then, let's have a great look at our scores before we go back down the line. 11 was the best score of the past, David. Very well done indeed to you. 42 is where we go after that. Uh, Rob and Sarah, 45, Jim and Gerald, and Susan and Abby. Our low score is going into the head-to-head -head last time. There you are. Our high score is halfway through our first round this time. Abby, you know what you have to do. OK, well, we're going to come back down the line now. Can the second players please step up to the podium? <laughs> Now then, Sarah. Um, Sarah, also a doctor. Um, but what do you do when not when not doctoring? Um, so I've been up to all sorts in my time these days. I spend most of my spare time with my 20-month-old daughter. Lovely. Lovely. Um, what do you look forward to getting back into when your 20-month-old daughter is sleeping through um, the night? And is well, it, is it so I used school? to get running again. So I used to do, I've, I've never been the world's best athlete, but I can run. Um, only I can't get out of the house at the moment because she seems to grab onto a leg. But I'd like to get back to doing some 10Ks. Have you got one of those special, you do sometimes see those, we use those for three-wheeled buggies. Yeah. People run rather smugly. So you can only run smugly <laughs> if you don't have to stop and feed the ducks. Ah, oh, yeah, 
I see your problem. I see your problem. Nat, uh, 42, there you are. Not bad at all, the high scorers over here, Abby and Susan. 14 points in it. So if you can score 13 or less, you won't even overtake them. So um, I'm going to go for Brazil. Brazil. OK, here's your red line. If you get below that with Brazil, you are definitely in to round two. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Brazil. It's actually second on the list, the second most airports and airfields in the world, Brazil. Indeed, thank you, Richard. Uh, now, then, Gerard. Hello. Hello, here from Stoke on Trent. Remind yeah. us what you do, Gerard. I'm a youth ambassador for one of the world's uh, largest and oldest youth organisations. Excellent. And uh, how long have you done that for? Um, eight and a half years now. Right, and that's just one particular, is it the whole area for this? Uh, Oh, should we just say the YMCA? Yes. Shall we just say the YMCA? <laughs> it is. There. YMCA, yeah, yeah. Come on. there we are. How bored do you get of people singing village people? Yeah. Well, <laughs> every time I walk around in supermarkets, my uniform line, there's like little kids that do the YMCA. Um, and so you yeah. just have to go, ah, ah, ah. I said, why, yes, I suppose you're right. <laughs> uh, but it's a bit annoying, though. It's a bit annoying as well. Same time. Yeah. yeah. Um, now then, Jarrell, mm -hmm. 45. Not a bad score from Jim at all. Yeah. Behind you on 63 are Rob and Sarah. If you can possibly score 17 or less, yeah. you'd be through to the next round. <laughs> well, I'm probably going to be a bit silly, a bit stupid. I'll go there, I'll go to that. I'll say um, Indonesia. What is silly about Indonesia, Gerard? Sounds like a brilliant answer. Stands to reason. There you are. There is your red line. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Indonesia. It's right. Looking very good, Gerard. Looking very good indeed, Gerard. That's a great answer. Very well played. They've got um, over 13,000 islands that make up Indonesia. Only 900 odd of them are, are inhabited, and only 600 odd airports. So a lot of a lot of islands without airstrips. Very nice. Uh, now then, Ian, well Hi. to point this. Lovely to have you with us. You. Um, and now, Ian, when did you and David decide to come on the show, and whose idea was it? Well, uh, it's his. <laughs> <laughs> He's been dying to come on the show for since it started. Mm. So we did the application, and here we are. And here we are. And Ian, what do you like getting up to? Well, I'm retired, but I'm, I'm actually um, a film extra. I do a bit oh, of you. that sort of stuff. Now that, I mean, that's really quite, I mean, it's, they're quite long Days, a lot right? of hanging around, a lot of yeah. sitting around, but I enjoy it. And I don't do it for the money, I do it because I love meeting people. Well, that's so, nice, yeah. I mean, so that, that's that, a, yeah. It's a great opportunity for that. Some great anecdotes you hear flying around <laughs> Quite on, a few. on film set. <laughs> um, and not all of them repeatable. <laughs> uh, Ian, you are on 11. Uh, fantastic low score, the second lowest score of the round uh, from David, round so far, I should say. Um, if you could score 51 or less, you're through to the next round. What would you like to go for? Argentina. 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 Here is your red line. Let's see if you can get below that with Argentina. It's right. You are through to round two. Well, look at that. You've beaten David's score. Nine for Argentina, taking your total up to a nice, neat round 20. Lowest total of the round. Sixth on the list, Argentina, over a thousand airports. Very impressive so far. No 100 mm. points. I would have put money on there being a Mm. Point in this round. Very well done, everybody. Yeah. Thank you very much. Abby, welcome back. Hello. Uh, Reminds us what you do, Abby. Uh, copy manager. A copy, a like a manager, he's going to copying managers, basically. <laughs> <laughs> copy manager. Yeah. Um, for a copy manager, for... It, it's a beauty company, and it's the copy that goes on the packaging of X. products. See, that's quite fun. How many of you are doing that, or is it just, oh, it's just you? just me. See, that's the best way. We're one-man team. Oh, yeah. but if there were, yes, if there were several, there's a committee doing it, you'd never yeah. agree, you'd would never you? You'd never decide, no. yeah. No. Um, and your interests, Abby? Um, I like playing touch rugby. It's one of the big things I do. I belong to a couple of rugby clubs. Um, so we play for fun each week, but then we enter tournaments in the summer. And uh, so that's and that's fun. where it gets really serious. Uh, yeah, it's quite competitive. But fun. It can be tough, yeah. Uh, now, um, things have changed a little bit, but not a great deal. You have to score six or less, Abby. Mm. Six or less. It can be done. It can be done. Indonesia scored four, just to put well, things into Well, that was actually context. one of my answers. Yes, yes. 
Um, so I think at this point, well, I've not got an awful lot to lose. Um, I might go along the theme of island nations and say Philippines. The Philippines. You're getting a bit approving nods from Gerard yeah. and Jim, which is good. <laughs> Uh, the Philippines, there is your red line. If you can get below that red line with the Philippines, you stay. Above that red line, we say goodbye. Let's see how many of our 100 people said the Philippines. That stood to reason, I thought, but um, that scores you 100 points, takes your total up to 156. That's really unlucky. It's a very, very good guess, and you had to go for a, a low one because you know the biggest scorer we got in the round was Russia. So you're forced into it. They're, they're 24th. They've got fewer airports than us. 247 airports in the Philippines. <laughs> really? It's like I mean, nothing, right? Yeah. Nothing. Um, amazing stuff from uh, all of our players because there's only 17 correct answers on the list at all so to get seven of them was very very impressive well done everybody and it means your job was incredibly hard on podium one there's a few answers you could have given which would have seen you through at uh, one point for colombia and chile colombia and chile both would have scored you one point a lot of the south american nations are there i think because they're very big and there's got lots of remote places and but there's three pointless answers uh one is paraguay one is bolivia and one is an island nation, uh, and it's Papua New Guinea. Wow. This is an amazing answer. If anybody got that, it's very impressive. Other than that, we've had a lot of the good answers. Mexico would have scored you nine. France would have scored you 39. Australia would have scored you 41. Then we've had Canada and Germany and Russia. China was second, would have scored you 60 points. Uh, and the country with the most airports, won't surprise you to know, is the United States. It's also the highest scorer. What do you think the United States would have scored? 95. 98. Oh, 98 points for the USA. There we are. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. And that means we come to the end of our first round and have to say goodbye to one of our pairs and Abby and Susan. I'm so sorry it is you. There are times when being on the first podium, I think, is particularly difficult. And I think this was one of those rounds. But uh, everyone has played incredibly well. And Abby, that was a, that was a good guess. I'm sorry it was wrong there, that's all. But uh, thank you so much for playing. Abby and Susan. Great to have you here. For the remaining three pairs, it's now time for round two. And just like that, we are down to three pairs. But well done, well done, all of you. Gerard, well done, our lowest individual score there. Well done to Ian and David, our lowest team score there. And Rob and Sarah, just brilliant. Um, best of luck for the next round. Our category for round two today is... Authors, can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second, and whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. Okay, and the question concerns writers known by their initials. Richard. Uh, on here, we're going to show you the first and middle names of various authors. Uh, you need to tell us the surnames, please. So they're authors who are always known by their initials. We're going to show you their actual names. We need the surnames for each of these, please. Thank you very much. Let's reveal our first and second names of these authors. And here is our first board of six. We have got Phyllis Dorothy, Death Comes to Family, 2011. Vidyada Suraj Prasad, A House for Mr. Biswas, 1961. Edward Morgan, The Longest Journey, 1907. David Herbert, The Rainbow, 1915. Jerome David, The Catcher in the Rye, 1951. And Herbert George, The Island of Dr. Morrow, 1896. I will read those again. Phyllis Dorothy, Death Comes to Pembley, 2011. Vidyada Suraj Prasad, A House for Mr. Biswas, 1961. Edward Morgan, The Longest Journey, 1907. David Herbert, The Rainbow, 1915. Jerome David, The Catcher in the Rye, 1951. And Herbert George, The Island of Dr. Moreau, 1896. David. Right. Um... I know a few of them. I'm going to go for Jerome David Salinger. Salinger, Salinger. says David. But the catcher in the rye, let's see how many of our 100 people said Salinger. It's right. Good answer, David. Down to 31. Very well done, indeed. 31 for J.D. Salinger. Yeah, of course, we know him as J.D. Salinger. You see how it works? I got it. Ah. I have now picked this up. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Uh, Jim. Oops. Not my strong point. I don't really know any of those guys, unfortunately. Um, so 
so I'm just going to have to say uh, David Herbert Jones. David Herbert Jones says Jim. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Jones. Bad luck, Jim. Bad luck. I'm afraid. Uh, I'm afraid that scored you 100 points. Yeah, sorry, Jim. D. H. Jones sounds like a gentleman's outfitter. So, uh, <laughs> doesn't. I was going to D. H. Jones for some new driving gloves. A good one. So, yeah. Very nice. Thank you very much indeed, Rob. This board is all yours. So if you felt like talking us through all those, um, as yet, to, I, think um, I, I think I only know two. I mean, the top one's probably P. D. James, but I'm going to go for the bottom one, which is H. G. Wells. H. G. Wells says Rob. But let's see how many of our 100 people said Wells. It is H. G. Wells. 100 is the high score. 31 is the low. 48 where you end up with H. G. Wells. Played Rob uh, actually would have scored slightly fewer points for um, PD James, which absolutely is the top answer there. She would have scored you 35 points. You'll know all of these, I suspect. Um, David Herbert, yeah, Lawrence, CH Lawrence, yeah, he would have scored 34. EM Forster, EM Forster would have scored you 26. And the best answer on the board, BS Naple, yeah, BS Naple, five points for that. Very well done if you said that at home. Thank you very much indeed. So, we are halfway through the round. Let's take a look at those scores. 31 was the best score of the past, David. Very well done. David and Ian, once again, looking quite strong. 48 score behind Rob and Sarah. Now, Jim and Gerald. 100 points. I mean, you know, it's redeemable, Gerald, but we definitely need a low score for yep. you. Okay, so good luck with that. We're going to come back down the line now. Can the second players please step up to the podium? <laughs> and let's put six more authors up on the board. Here they are, just the first and second names. Clive Staples, The Abolition of Man, 1943. Pamela Linden, Mary Poppins, 1934. Pelham Grenville, The Code of the Worcesters, 1938. Thomas Stearns, Four Quartets, 1943. Susan Eloise, The Outsiders, 1967. And Alan Alexander, When We Were Very Young, 1924. I'll read those again. Clive Staples, The Abolition of Man, 1943. Pamela Linden, Mary Poppins, 1934. Pelham Grenville, The Code of the Worcesters, 1938. Thomas Stearns, Four Quartets, 1943. Susan Eloise, The Outsiders, 1967, and Alan Alexander, When We Were Very Young, 1924. Sarah. Gosh, I wish I'd gone first. Um, I only know two. OK. 51 is your target. 51 or less. I'm going to choose Alan Alexander, and I think that's A.A. A. Milne. A.A. A. Milne, says Sarah. Here is your red line. If you can get below this red line, you are through to the head-to-head. -head. How many people said Milne? It's right. Very good indeed. Through you go, head head 36, what you score there? 84 is your turn. Yeah, that was a book of poetry from A.A. A. Milne, where Winnie the Pooh makes his first appearance, but as Edward Bear. It's the same bear, but different name. Had to, he had to change his name because there was another bear. Yeah, yeah exactly. There was another bear in poetry already called Edward Bear. Yeah, yeah I would have chosen Winnie the Pooh myself. But, no, uh, no, yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed. Now, Gerald. In the world in which you would stay, you would have to score less than 30. 30 or less. Yeah. Not a good round. Um, very struggling. Um, but what I did know was, was the AA Milne. Um, let's go. I'm just going to stab in the dark. Um, it really is. Um, it's probably wrong, but I'll give it a go. Um, just by the name, um, Clive Staples. I say C.S. Lewis. C.S. Lewis says, Gerard, no red line for you. Your high scorers. Let's see how many of our 100 people said C.S. Lewis. It is C.S. Lewis. And there you are. 30 is a prize that we needed to score. You've done the first bit. 130 is your total. But he, you tell Gerard to score 30 or less, and that's what he does. You've got to hand it to him. A little bit of pressure now. A little bit of pressure. Now then, Ian, would you like yeah. to talk us through the board? <laughs> I'd love to, but I can't. But um, there's one left that I know. Um, P.G. Woodhouse. OK. The Code of the Worcesters. P.G. Woodhouse says, Ian, let's see how many of our 100 people said P.G. Woodhouse. Here is your red line, nice and high. And P.G. Woodhouse is good enough. There we are, 38. Until 
very well played Ian let's fill this in there's one up here I didn't know I wonder if you'll know one, no, yeah. uh, so PL Tra Travis sorry yeah. Travis yes. they're a bunch of Mary Poppins who scored you 23 and TS Elliot absolutely he would have scored you 33 but this is the tough one I didn't know this one oh, no, I... S.E. Hinton is the answer we'll just score five points so well done to our 100 S.E. Hinton and well done if you said that at home Thank you very much indeed, Richard. So at the end of our second round, the pair we have sent home with their high score of 130, Gerard and Jim, it is you. However, we will see you again next time. I'm sure you'll do just as well, if not better. Uh, we look forward to that very much. In the meantime, thanks very much, Gerard and Jim.